Okay, now I'm going to add to this, you know, what other types of data. So let's go under qualitative data now. Um, under qualitative data, we have something called discrete data and continuous data. Discrete versus continuous. All right, so, you know, when you guys think of continuous, you probably think of um, something that goes on forever. <laughs> continuous. And so these are values that come from an infinite scale. So values coming from an infinite scale. Values coming from an infinite scale. Versus discrete, these are values that are countable. And so I also you know, want you guys to think of whole numbers. So values that are countable, values coming from an infinite scale, things like decimals, okay, things like decimals. So when I talk about types of data, um, let's talk about, um, okay, the, so for example, the number of water bottles in a pack of, uh, in a pack of water. What would you consider that? You know, would that be, it's obviously numerical, so it's quantitative data. Now, the number of water bottles in a pack of water. So you get like 24, maybe you get five, four, maybe you get like, I don't know, Costco has like, what is it, 48? I don't know. But you get a, a value that is a whole number, right? I can't represent the number of water bottles in a pack of water by anything um, decimal wise. They are all basically whole numbers. Therefore, this type of data would be considered discrete data. Now, if I talk about the amount, or let's say the volume, in one water bottle, that could be represented by a decimal. That could be represented by a decimal because I can say that I have 20.1, you know, liters. Well, that's a lot. 20.1 milliliters, whatever. Or 20 milliliters. Or, you know, 19.9 milliliters. You know, it's never technically perfect, but it can be represented as a decimal. Even though, let's say, the water bottle says one liter. It might not be exactly one. What if it's, you know, 0.99 of a liter? So because I can represent the amount or the volume within one water bottle as a decimal, then that is considered continuous data. So both of these are considered quantitative data, but now we're talking about um, the discrete versus continuous quantitative data. Now there are other ways that we can represent data. Um, these are called the levels of measurement. The levels of measurement. So let me see if I can put a table here. I need what? One, two, three, four, five. Five rows. Let's do that. All right, cool. Let me type in here. All right, so. Let's go here. I'm going to do um, the level of measurement. And I obviously have to make this much smaller. Let's go 12. Let's try that again. Go to 12. Okay. Level of measurement. This is the brief description. And this is an example.
Don't need that. Okay. So, all right. So let's use this table to talk about what, you know, levels of measurement. The first level of measurement is called a ratio level of measurement. And um, the way that we would describe a ratio level of measurement, we say that there is no natural zero starting point. No natural zero starting point. So we're going to use this table, and the first type of what we call level of measurement is called the ratio level of measurement. And the ratio level of measurement, um, the way that we describe it, we would say that there is a, um, okay, there is a um, natural zero starting point. And when I say that there is a natural zero starting point, that means that, you know, no negative numbers, okay? So whatever type of uh, data is represented or considered a ratio level of measurement, we don't have any negative values in there. Um, and ratios make sense. So for example, um, distance, right? Distance, distance. Distance is an example of a type of data, so I can collect different distances, but I can't represent a distance with negative numbers, so I would have to start at zero in terms of distance, right? Starting at a natural zero starting point. And then I could talk about ratios, um, you know, like one distance is twice as long, or, you know, uh, one distance is three to one uh, compared to another distance. I can use ratios, think of ratios as fractions too, I guess. You could, it's a little more than that, but. Um, you could represent the data. The ratios mean something when you're dealing with the, that type of data. So, you know, distances, lengths, heights, things like this. Um, considered, any data that has that kind of stuff is considered a ratio level of measurement. Um, interval is the next type of level of measurement. And interval um, differences are meaningful. But um, there is no natural zero starting point. So now I can use negative numbers, okay, to represent this type of data. Um, ratios are meaningless. So, for example, um, temperatures. Temperature, body temperature, or temperatures, you know, there is no natural zero starting point because I can have negative values within that data, right? Negative 10 degrees, that's very cold, you know, versus 70 degrees, which is much warmer. So temperatures, they, they have no natural zero starting point versus like this type ratio. There is a natural zero starting point. I can't have negative numbers here, but I can here. Um, differences are meaningful. So like if it's 40 degrees in New York and 70 degrees in Florida, that difference, when we talk about differences in mathematics, we're talking about subtraction. You know, 70 minus 40, it's 30 degrees warmer in Florida. And the ratios are meaningless. Um, next type of level of measurement is called ordinal. Ordinal, um, we say, so ordinal, every time I hear ordinal, I think of order. So data can be arranged in order. Um, differences, for, you know, in terms of subtraction, um, are meaningless. So, for example, um, ranks, ranks of colleges. You can order it, correct? Um, you could technically say one school is, is ranked higher than another, okay, academically or whatever. Um, so it can be arranged in order. But differences, if I subtract values, that doesn't mean anything when I'm talking about ranks of colleges. I can't say, you know, like um, NYU minus, you know, FIU. That doesn't make any sense. So ordinal data, ranks of colleges, you could do something like that. That's considered an ordinal level of measurement. Nominal, again, we're just categorizing data. We're just talking about types of data. Um, nominal is categories only. Um, it can't be ordered. So categories only. Data 
cannot be arranged in order. So, you know, eye color. Eye color I can categorize, blue versus, you know, blue, brown, uh, green, but I can't say that, I can't arrange it in order. I can't say that brown eyes are better than blue eyes. I mean, that's an opinion, right? I can't necessarily say that that is factual. So I cannot um, order it, but I can categorize it. So these are called the levels of measurement. And these are different ways that we can actually um, categorize types of data. Um, so we also have within levels of measurement qualitative and quantitative data and discrete and continuous you know so if I'm you know taking a list of values and they're representing distances then I would say that list that data set is you know has ratio levels of measurement that data is ratio um, if I have you know if I collect eye color from my students you know then I'm collecting nominal type of data so this is a way of just categorizing data that's all